Hi guys, Mimi G here. Welcome back to my channel. Sorry it's taken me so long to do the sew along for my last uh, Simplicity Pattern 9114, the dress, which is this one here. You guys have been waiting very patiently, so thank you so much. There was a huge move that happened, um, and then the coronavirus sort of kicked up, and this pandemic it was just a big mess. So. I finally took time today to film it, so I hope you guys enjoy it. Now, if you're new to sewing or you need a refresher course, you can watch the video linked in the description box below. It's called the Sewing Basics video. If you don't know anything about sewing at all, I have an online sewing and design school, sewatacademy.com, that is designed for beginners. You will love it. Check out the free trial, and if you like it, you can sign up. All right, guys, let's get started. Okay guys, so you're clearly gonna need the pattern, Simplicity 9114. And remember that on the back of the envelope, you're going to get a list of all the fabric yardage requirements based on whatever size you choose, as well as fabric recommendations and any notions like zippers, buttons, interfacing that you might need. Now let's go over all the pieces that you're going to need to cut. You're gonna to need to cut pattern piece number 10. You're going to cut out two of fabric and two of interfacing. This is the cuff for our sleeves. You're gonna cut out pattern piece number seven, which is the collar. You're gonna cut two of fabric and one of interfacing. You're gonna cut out two of pattern piece number nine, and this is our continuous lap. You're gonna cut out pattern piece number eight, which is our sleeve. You're gonna cut two of fabric. You're gonna cut out pattern piece number one, which is our bodice front, and you're going to cut two of fabric. You're gonna cut pattern piece number two, one on the fold of fabric. You're gonna cut pattern piece number four, you're going to be cutting two, and you're also going to cut two of pattern piece number three. This is the skirt yoke front and the skirt yoke back. Lastly, you're gonna be cutting out pattern piece number six, which is the skirt back, and pattern piece number five, which is the skirt front. Now, once you have everything cut and interfaced, we can start sewing. Okay, now in the instructions, you're going to see that they have you start off with the bodice and with the sleeve, but because most of this project is really just gonna entail a ton and ton of gathering, I'm gonna go ahead and get you started there. I'd rather get that out of the way first and then we'll continue with the bodice and the collar and the sleeve and the cuff. So what you're gonna do first is you're gonna grab pattern piece number four and three. Now four and three are the front and back yoke. This goes on your garment first and then we have a second layer, a tier, that goes attached to this one. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna gather three and four five and six, and then we're gonna attach them together. So let's go ahead and start by grabbing number three and number four front and back of our skirt yoke. What we're gonna do is with right sides facing, you're gonna grab one three and one four. I'm gonna set the other two aside. And you should have marked your notches. So always start with your notches first and pin. I'm working with a stripe, so it's gonna take me a little more time because I need to make sure that my stripes are aligned. Okay, and now what we're gonna do is you're going to stitch using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. All right, guys, now we have one really long piece that we're going to need to gather. Remember that we're not stitching together the other side of three because this is the center front and this is where our buttons are gonna go. So make sure that you are paying attention to your center back seam on number four. Pattern piece number three has the interfacing along the center front. You're gonna be doing the same exact thing with pattern pieces five and six. You'll notice that pattern piece number five along the center front is also interfaced. So what you're going to do is just like we did three and four, you're gonna attach one six to one five at the side seam. Then you're gonna attach the center back of pattern piece number six. So right sides facing and stitch. Okay, I know you're looking at me crazy right now because this is a really gigantic piece of fabric that you're going to need to gather. And so I apologize for that. 
but I promise it's worth it in the end. This is a beautiful dress that you can wear as an open jacket. Um, so what you're gonna do is you're going to take your long pieces three and four and you're gonna be doing the same exact thing for five and six and you're gonna be creating gathering rows. So what you're gonna do is, and this is just what I find easiest to do than to create one long row of gathering stitches is to do it in pieces. So what I do is I start at the center front and I do two rows of gathering stitches, obviously back stitching at the beginning but not at the end so you can pull your threads. And what I do is I create the two rows of gathering stitches in between each seam. So here I would do two rows, then I would move over and then in between these two seam lines, I would do two rows and then I would move over and in between these two rows or these two seam lines, I would create two rows and so on and so on. You're gonna do the same exact thing for three and four and five and six. Once we have the gathering stitches, we'll start attaching pattern piece five and six to three and four. All right guys, so you should have all of your um, pieces Okay, so everything should be uh, gathered, right? Ugh. All right, so um, you should have done your gathering stitches for your really big piece, which was five and six. And then the second big piece, which was three and four. Now we're gonna go ahead and we're going to connect five and six to three and four. So this is the very bottom of the dress. This four and three is the yoke, right? This is the part that connects to the bodice and then five and six connects to the yoke. And now I can go ahead and just with my fingernails, start spreading the gathering so it's even. And then once it's pretty even, I'm gonna go ahead and pin it together. Awesome, one section done. Now we just move on to the next section. And you're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna pull and gather your big piece onto four and three until it fits. And you're gonna do each section the same way. All right guys, once you have all of your sections pinned together, we can go ahead and stitch our lower part of our skirt to our skirt yoke. So go ahead and stitch using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Then I want you to finish off your seam allowance either by serging, either pinking shears or a zigzag stitch on your machine and then give it a good press. All right guys, so we have done the hardest part, I promise you, <laughs> was taking time to do all of this gathering. So now that we've attached the lower part of the skirt to the skirt yoke, we can go ahead and start on our bodice then once we're done with our bodice, we can connect the yoke to the bodice. So we're gonna go ahead and set this aside for just a second. And I want you to grab your bodice front and back. You're gonna lay front to back, right sides facing, and we're going to pin and stitch our shoulders in place. So match up your notches. Gonna pin your shoulders. Okay, now you're, you're just gonna head over to your sewing machine and you're going to stitch using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance across both shoulders. Okay, so now that you've gone ahead and attached your shoulders, give it a good press, you're gonna go ahead and grab your sleeve. So your sleeve pattern had a stitching line at the bottom of the sleeve that you should have marked and I've gone ahead and stitched it what we're gonna do is we're gonna be using this for our continuous slap. That's gonna be the opening for our cuff. So what you're gonna do is make sure that you've done your stitching line on both of these. Now we're gonna go ahead and attach our sleeve to our bodice using the flat method. So you're going to open up your bodice and you're going to grab your sleeve you're gonna make sure that you're pinning right to uh, front to front and back to back. So the front has one notch, the back has two notches. So make sure that the sleeve 
and the bodice both have the same amount of notches when you're pinning. I'm gonna pin there first. And then I'm gonna pin at the shoulder seam. And what I'm gonna do now is in areas where I know I need a little more give, I can use my scissors to make small snips into the bodice so that uh, it will open up a bit more and ease onto my sleeve cap. So there isn't a whole lot that I need to do, but I am just gonna give it a couple of snips. And pin. Okay, now you're going to ease and pin your other sleeve to the other side of the bodice the same way. Then you're gonna to head to your sewing machine and using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, you're going to stitch along the sleeve. Okay, so let's go ahead and finish off our sleeve. So now that we've attached our sleeve to our bodice, I want you to go ahead and cut up the middle of, your, of that stitching line that you created. Grab your continuous lap and on one unnotched edge, you're going to turn and press a quarter inch. Now we're gonna stitch the right side of our continuous lap to the wrong side of our sleeve. So let's go ahead and pin. Remember the right side of the continuous lap, this would be the wrong side because that's where you see the fold over. So we're gonna pin the right side to the wrong side of our sleeve. I'm gonna pin along the middle. And at the end. Okay, now when we go to stitch this, what you're going to do is you're going to stitch starting at a quarter inch, but you're going to be going almost till nothing because you're going to catch that little bit. You're gonna be sewing it sort of in a straight line. It was like this. Now you're gonna pull it open and you're going to stitch a quarter inch till nothing just to barely catch that, then continue on back to a quarter inch. Okay, I'm gonna start by back stitching and stitching a quarter of an inch. I'm narrowing down to almost nothing at that middle section. And now we're gonna be working on the right side. Now we're gonna go ahead and you're going to fold over the pressed edge just past your stitching line. And you're going to edge stitch. And now you're gonna fold it in half and you'll notice that I'm looking at the wrong side of my fabric and we're going to create a little triangle. Just like that. Okay, when you create that little V, I've gone ahead and given this a press. What it does is it automatically sort of overlaps one piece over the other. So now what you're gonna do is you're going to create more rows of gathering, but it's just a tiny piece. You're gonna gather in between here and in between here. Now, after you've done that, while at your sewing machine, I want you to also go to your ironing table and on your cuff, you're going to turn and press along one side, five eighths of an inch. I want you to trim it down to a quarter inch. Okay, now that I've created both rows of gathering stitches along the bottom of my sleeve and I went and turned under 5 eighths of an inch along one long edge of my cuff and trimmed it down to a quarter inch, we're going to go ahead and stitch our sleeve together and our side seam. So we're going to match up our underarm seam first and pin there. And then pin the rest of the bodice together. 
and then pin the rest of the sleeve together. Okay, now head over to your sewing machine. You're going to stitch in one continuous seam, starting at the bottom of the sleeve using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, up to under the underarm seam, and then down the side seam. Okay, now that you have your sleeve and your side seam sewn together, what you're going to do now is you're going to gather the sleeve onto our cuff. So your cuff is going to extend. Remember that this part of the continuous lap is to the inside. And I'm gonna go ahead and pin, your cuff is gonna extend 5 eighths of an inch from the end. And then I'm gonna pin the other side and then I'm just gonna gather in between. And then make sure to match up your notches. Now go ahead to your sewing machine using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. You're going to stitch from one end to the other. Okay, so I have gone ahead and pressed my seam allowance towards my cuff. I have also trimmed it down to um, just remove some of that excess bulk. And what you're going to do now is you're going to fold this onto itself, matching up the folded edges, and you're going to pin. You're going to do the same thing on the other side. Remember this extended. 5 eighths of an inch on 5 eighths of an inch on either side. So we're going to go ahead and close this out. So using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, you're going to stitch down and stitch down. Okay, once you've done that, you're going to turn your cuff to the right side, right? You're going to poke out your corners. Now I want you to press it in half, making sure that the folded edge is just past your stitching line. And what you can do is slip stitch this closed or you can turn it to the right side and top stitch. You're going to do the other sleeve and side seam the same exact way. All right, I've gone ahead and just put a pin in my cuff. You can make your buttonholes now, um, or you can wait till the end to do it. Um, and it also just depends on the instructions for your sewing machine. So whatever your sewing machine instructions are for sewing on buttonholes, that's what you're going to do. You can do all of your buttonholes at the end of the project, which is usually what I do. So now that we have both our sleeves and our cuffs done, we can go ahead and move on to our collar. So I'm gonna set this aside. I'm gonna grab my collar. And what we're gonna do is with right sides facing, one is interfaced, so remember to interface one if you forgot. I'm gonna lay this right sides facing. Now on the interfaced side, you're going to turn three eighths of an inch and you're going to press. Then you're gonna trim that three eighths of an inch down to a quarter inch. You're only turning over and trimming on the collar that is interfaced, not on the other piece. Okay, now we're gonna pin our collars together. Okay, now we're gonna use three eighths of an inch seam allowance. So we're going to stitch three eighths along the side, then along the top, and then back down. Okay, so I have gone ahead and stitched. You can see that there's a slight curve here. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim and then cut into that little corner there. Now I went ahead and did a couple of stitches just to reinforce that. So I'm gonna cut just a tad Make sure you don't cut through your stitching. And I'm going to trim some of this away. Clip into your corners. Okay, now I want you to turn your collar to the right side, poke out any corners, round off any rounded areas you have, and give this a really good press. Okay, once you have your collar nicely pressed, we're gonna set this aside for just a second because we're gonna go ahead and attach our bodice to the bottom portion of our dress. So what we're gonna do is set this aside for a sec, grab your bodice, grab your skirt, our side seams first. So find one of the seams, you know it's the closest to the end, okay? So that's how you'll know. And I'm going to match that up to the side seam on my bodice. I'm going to pin the center back 
to that seam, which is the center back seam of six. And then I'm gonna go ahead and pin my other side seam. And now very much like we did the bottom portion of our skirt to the skirt yoke, you're gonna gather your piece until it fits onto your bodice and pin. Okay, once you've attached your bodice to the skirt, you're gonna go ahead and turn the front, center front in along the fold lines. You're going to fold and press once, and then you're going to fold and press again along the entire front end of both sides. Then you're gonna go ahead and you're going to edge stitch. Okay guys, now that we've turned the front plaque it in and stitched it. We're gonna go ahead and attach our collar. So on the back of your bodice, you should have two notches. Those correspond to the two notches on your collar. So match those up first. And then I like to go ahead and pin the center front to the end of my collar. Okay guys, now one more straight stitch to do. You're gonna stitch using 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance from one end to the other. Make sure that you don't catch the interfaced part of your collar. All right guys, so now what you're going to do is once you have it stitched, I like to press my seam towards my uh, collar and then I just tuck everything to the inside and you're going to pin. Now you have two options. You can either slip stitch this by hand or you can pin it and then edge stitch along the right side, whichever one you prefer. Now once you have that pinned and stitched in place, the only thing left for you to do is to make the buttonholes on your garment using your buttonhole guide, which was a pattern piece. You're simply going to place it over the top and you're going to mark your buttonholes. You're gonna make your buttonholes, you'll sew on your buttons, and then I suggest trying this on to make sure that the length is okay. If you need to shorten it, you can from the bottom up. If it's perfect, then you're just gonna do a double hem if you'd like. You can turn under and then turn over again, or you can fold up the entire hem allowance and finish it off that way. Once you do that, you are all done. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that sew along. Make sure and follow me on Instagram at Mimi G Style and at SewItAcademy.com if you're not already following. Until next time, peace.